What is up boys? I'm back. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install a five channel amplifier in your Civic SI. For clarification, this video does not have to be specific for the Civic SI. I'm just telling you how I did it in my SI. Anyone can use this information on how to install a five channel amp. The only reason I'm telling you about the SI, specifically the FG2, the, the two door, the coupe, is when I was doing mine, I had such a hard time figuring out where the factory amplifier was and it was such a pain in the ass that I wanna make your lives a lot easier and hopefully help explain to you guys how I did it in my car and hopefully you guys can do something similar. All right, so I wanna get right into it. I'm not waiting around. Let's get the whiteboard and I'm gonna show you guys like a diagram of how I did it. So this is the steering wheel, this is the head unit, and this is the battery. This is the stock amplifier. I just have these things as acronyms right now. So like SA, stock amplifier. Uh, this is the driver's seat. The very first question that you guys probably have if you're trying to do this job yourselves is where the heck is the stock amplifier? After doing hours of research, I finally figured it out. It is directly below the head unit under the center console. There's two wiring harnesses plugged into it. One that's a really big one and one that's smaller. The one that is really, really big is the one that has all of your speaker wires. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing out how I did this where I ran all the cables, where I put the new amplifier, that kind of stuff. I'll also have all of the wire colors listed on this whiteboard in just a second. You guys can pause the video, write notes. You're gonna need that info because the wiring is one of the hardest parts, just knowing what wires do what. All right, so boys, easily the first step is to figure out where you're gonna put your amplifier. A lot of people like to put it in their trunk. Let's say this is the trunk. I can't write like this. We're just gonna scribble. That's the trunk. A lot of people like to put it there. I chose not to. I wanted it in a little bit more of a discreet location, so I chose to put it underneath the seat, the driver's seat. So, amp. Second step that's really, really important is figuring out how you're gonna run your power wire. You wanna keep it as far away from your speaker wires as you possibly can to avoid static. This route that I took doesn't really accomplish that super effectively, but it does for the most part. I couldn't figure out a way to get it through the wheel well, like up here in the driver's side wheel. So I decided to take this route. Went from the amplifier, up through the trim to the left of the driver's seat, under the steering wheel, like above the gas pedal and stuff, and then behind the head unit, and through the firewall. There's already a grommet there. There's already a hole. It's ready to go for you guys. You can just put the wire straight through. From there, I just went into the engine bay, across the engine bay on the driver's side, and then up the side of the hood and to the positive terminal. But that was like almost the hardest thing for me to do because I didn't know what route to take. I was just trying so many different things. That's what I got to work. Hopefully this saves you guys a ton of time and a ton of effort because that was a huge pain in the ass. The second thing you guys are gonna wanna do just to get it done and out of the way is to ground your amplifier. What I did is since this amplifier was right underneath the driver's seat, I just ran the ground wire straight from the amplifier to underneath the trim piece that's to the left of the driver's seat. I removed that trim piece a little bit, drilled a hole, scraped off some paint, grounded it straight to that. Worked perfectly, it's awesome, no complaints. If you really wanna be cool about it, you can like spray paint over it or whatever, do something like that so that it doesn't rust, D do what you want on that. Now your amplifier is powered and grounded. I wouldn't recommend hooking it up at this point, just have the cable there ready to go. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is kind of the grunt work. It's really just time consuming and tedious and it hurts your fingertips. You're gonna locate the stock amplifier, you're gonna unplug it from the harnesses. Get that bit out of there. Say goodbye, we don't need that anymore, no good. Dock amp, gone, it's no longer there. So now we have one harness with a lot of wires and a smaller harness. Forget the smaller harness, don't even worry about it. The bigger harness has all the speaker connections, I might have already said that. What I should have done, and what I recommend to you guys to do, is to buy an aftermarket wiring harness for this amplifier if you can find it. If I find it after making this video, I will put a link to it in the description to make your guys' lives a lot easier. But what I ended up doing is I ended up cutting every single wire with a pair of wire snips, stripping them all and soldering them all. Huge L. It was sucked. It was so tedious. But anyway, we're gonna keep going. You're going to solder those wires or connect those wires to some speed wire. If you guys don't know what speed wire is, let me grab some. All right, boys, this is speed wire. It's just like a really big, thick wire. 
um, a piece of insula insulation, I guess. And it just has a ton of connections. I believe this one has 10 wires inside of it. This has eight wires inside of it. The reason I'm saying to solder this all up and connect this speed wire first is because this is gonna be annoying to do if you have a lot of other wires in your way. So you might wanna get this done first and then worry about doing the easier stuff at the end. Essentially what this does is this runs from your amplifier to all of your speakers. So this will be carrying that amplified audio from your amplifier to your speakers to be output to you to listen to. Okay, so moving on. So we wire our speed, we get our speed wire going, we run it to the amplifier. The amplifier has eight different terminals for the positive and negative for each speaker. So that runs from your factory amplifier harness to your aftermarket amplifier. This might be confusing because you're like, wait, why would I run wire from an amp to another amp? That's not what this is. Those wires, like I was saying, were originally plugged into your stock amplifier and they were taking that amplified current and putting it to your speakers to be output. Now essentially what you're doing, you're bypassing the stock amp you're just moving the amplifier over here essentially by using the speed wire. Uh, once that's all wired up, I actually had a separate two wires, so the positive and negative for the subwoofer that was not included in the speed wire that I ran from this harness as well to the amplifier. Now I have my four speakers and my subwoofer all receiving that amplified current from the amplifier. As you can see, this is starting to get a little bit messy, but that's how it is. It is a chaos of wires. You guys are gonna have to get over. It's really stressful at first. All right, so the next step, and it really just gets easier from here, is to run your RCA wires from your head unit to your amplifier. So that's gonna be six wires total. Anyway, those go directly from the head unit down through the center console and straight into the amplifier. So now essentially what this is doing, for anyone who doesn't understand, and it's no big deal, it's super complicated at first to understand this stuff. Your head unit is receiving an audio signal from your MP3 player, CD player, whatever device. Your head unit sends that signal down the RCA wires that you just hooked up into the amplifier. The amplifier is receiving power from the battery to amplify that audio signal. That audio signal is then being sent out from the amplifier through the speed wire that you just ran to the harness that came from the stock amplifier and then straight to your speaker. That's how this all works. It's that easy. It's head unit to amplifier to speakers. I know there's a ton of information. The only way that I was able to make sense of it was a simplify it like that. Think about it in very small, easy steps. Head unit, amplifier, speakers. How do we get that current from place to place? with the wires we installed. The last step really is just to put everything back together. After you put everything back together, you're gonna have to tune your amplifier, which is really hard to understand at first. If you can figure out how to do with a multimeter, please do. If you wanna know how to do with a multimeter, please leave me a comment and I will show you guys how to tune an amplifier using a multimeter. It makes it way easier. And lastly, I'm gonna go outside and show you guys my setup in my car right now. However, it is dark, so I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow morning. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. I'll start under the hood. So you guys can probably see this extra long uh, red cable. This is the power cable for my amp. It runs all the way through here, down, under, and through the firewall back there. Uh, right about there. That was pretty much the biggest pain in the ass of this whole job, I think. Then I'm gonna go over inside the cabin. All of the cables coming from the head unit start at the head unit as you would imagine, and they go down under this whole center console, out this way, and then under the driver's seat. And then if I were to show you like where the stock amp is located, it's like right here. So it's right under, it's like directly below the head unit underneath this like cubby in the center console. It's just a little square gray box. And then lastly, I'll show you guys the amp and everything that's plugged into it. All right, so on this side, these are all of the speaker outputs. These wires are the speed wire that I was talking about. This is taking that amplified audio signal and transporting it from the amp out to all the speakers. Um, these are the subwoofer ones I was talking about. They're separate. Um, here's the power cable as I was talking about. Here's the ground and that runs straight here. You can see it better now. And then onto the other side, so you guys can see they're just all the RCA cables. So these are the subwoofer RCAs on this side, and these are the four speaker RCAs. And then I have all of my tuning stuff, which I'm not gonna be going over in this video because it would take me about 35 minutes for, to, for this video to end. All right, and then lastly, this is how I routed the cables under my center console. I actually used a file and filed this down a little bit so that it's not like pinching the cables at all. And then they just discreetly run from under the center console 
under my seat. So like none of the wires are visible really. And that is a fantastic part about installing it under your seat. And then lastly, I just have the sub in the trunk. It's a ported 12, it slaps. All right boys, so as always, just wanna end this video and say thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please click that like button, please subscribe. If you didn't like the video, get the heck out of here. As always, I'm Yanni Knowles. You guys are the best and have a nice day. Give me like a let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Woo.